clever use of logo imitating premise, but how many irritated employees had to deal with impatient assholes coming out of the theater saying the movie was messed up? Universal equals not giving a shit about the common folk. Also, 52 seconds of logos. And Comcast. Totally get that previews have scenes all the time that don't make it in the movie. However, the use of In the Club was such a huge part of the trailer for this movie, including implying that it was a song Tree's phone kept playing, it's quite sinful that the actual song in the movie was this bullshit. Discount Joshua Jackson. Dude, did you hit that fine vagina or what? Who the f*** does this? Even a rude-ass person like this knows there's a chance the girl could still be here, or that he might be asleep, or that he's not even in the dorm room right now. Stop global warming. Tree is addicted to global warming. Also, ladies and gentlemen, tonight the part of Ned Ryerson will be played by... Hold on, let me look this up. Sorry, internet's slow. Um, Taneo Intriago. I probably mispronounced that, ladies and gentlemen, but anyway, enjoy. Why would this one patch of grass need these sprinklers aimed in the same direction? And why are those the only sprinklers that came on in this entire area of campus? Even though this movie has zero to do with fraternities, movie still has to show that frat guys are dicks, because, you know, college movie. Also, movie clearly sets up broad moments so that she will realize she keeps waking up on the same day. But what are the chances she'd be accosted by someone with a clipboard, witness wet couple nookie, hear a car alarm, and see a frat pledge fall over in the span of walking 100 feet? Yeah, I'm returning in my text. Suspect roll call starts four minutes in. Meet Tim. Also, did he know she'd be doing the walk of shame from another dorm room this morning so he could meet up with her right here? She was clearly confused as to where she was when she woke up, which means this is probably not the route she takes every morning across campus. I mean, who takes their first date to Subway? It's not like you have a foot long. Aw, man. I was hoping they'd talk for another five minutes so that she could finally dust off some of her old Jared jokes. You also rammed your tongue down Nick Sim's throat right in front of Danielle. God, but she was so nice to me this morning. You mean literally five seconds ago, right? You just talked to her in the previous scene. That's kind of a weird thing to say when the conversation just happened. Did you really think you could keep it a secret from me? How did you find out? Driver's license? Considering the number of creepy friends and or former dates Tree keeps around, and her ability to get blackout drunk, I'm more surprised this will be the first instance of someone trying to murder her. Also, considering this sorority's view on fatty foods, why did Lori think this was the best way to deliver the poison? I assume you changed my ringer too. Who, me? No. Hope you don't care who changed the ringer, or why that was brought up, because the movie sure as f doesn't bring it up again. Sorry, too many carbs. Toodle. I'm definitely the killer face. And is that chocolate milk I see? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, too. But I'm not the least bit sorry for Becky. I mean, was that chocolate milk on her tray? What an asshole. Get with the program, Becky. Sorry, I didn't know where you lived. So I stalked around campus all day knowing you'd show up eventually. So is sex still on the table? It's none of my business, but I think something like this is bound to have some pretty serious consequences. You're right, it is. You're right, it's none of your business, cliche. Damn, how many times has she f this dude in his office to be able to kick this chair directly underneath the door handle like that? I mean, I've probably attempted this maneuver over a thousand times in the past, but no matter how many times I tried it, I failed, and my girlfriend walked in on me masturbating anyway. Just don't get anything on it, please. You mean like Nick's Nutter Butter? Wow. Classy, Danielle. Oh, come on. You would never go near Nick's Nutter Butter. It's too fattening. The most unbelievable thing in a movie that's main storyline involves someone magically reliving the same day over and over is that every f person on this campus seems to know the exact path Tree will take every time she walks anywhere. What the hell? Other than the Groundhog Day thing, this movie isn't supernatural. So how the f*** did this music box start back up? And for some reason, Tree is immortal and will get all the chances she needs to solve this case. We never figured out why Phil Connors relived the same day over and over. So why should we here? Sometimes God gives assholes 800 chances to get one day right. I read that in Ecclesiastes one time. Coincidence stickers. Even if it's the same day, there's no way that Tree's timing would be the same. She clearly got up and ready quicker than she did the first scene of this movie. Therefore, Ryan is busting through the door probably 30 seconds before he did on the previous day. Keeping that previous time-lapse theory in mind, it's not possible she would greet the same pervy dude, the protester, the sprinklers, and the frat pledge drop all at the exact same time she did previously. She should be ahead of all these events, and no matter how quickly or slowly she leaves the dorm room in this movie, these events always occur in the exact same way. It will take at least five days for Tree to stop being racist. I'm totally having deja vu right now. Did you learn this from The Matrix? Since when does deja vu feel like this? Where the entire morning is the exact same thing you just experienced, even if you're not ready to admit that it is the same thing. 
By the way, what college has a baby as their mascot? How fearsome is that? Okay guys, today's game pits the dingoes versus the babies. The dingoes are especially fearsome this year, so I don't want to hear anyone cry in the dark if this game gets out of hand, you evil angels. I miss breakfast. We all miss breakfast, Becky. The first time this happened, Danielle said, What is breakfast, Becky? I'm all about the ripples in space-time causing changes, but this is the exact thing Becky said last time to Danielle, and nobody outside a tree has changed their dialogue until now. It's normal for a young girl to have feelings for an older man, but... Jesus. They were like three seconds into making out before his wife showed up last time. Now they have time to go through a whole conversation. Tree having a dead mother who shares the same birthday is very sad and could explain why she acts so weird and hostile on her birthday. However, the movie indicates this is how Tree acts every day, so this side story adds nothing to the movie. By this point, how does she not know she's reliving the same day? Sure, it's far-fetched. I probably think there's no way this day was happening twice in a row. But after being able to predict the future a few times today, I'd probably rethink my path to the party, and maybe not even go to the party. No way. Killer apparently didn't have a backup plan if Tree chose not to approach the creepy music box. They need to teach Slasher 101 at this university. We find out in a minute this is a surprise party. But who does surprise parties like this? First off, they tell Tree that there is a party. But then they shut down everything and make the frat house look abandoned? It's a wonder she even went up to the door. This place looks like the Collector lives here. None of these people bothered screaming surprise and turning on the lights until after Tree had time to punch this dude in the face. Guys are playing poker at a hot girl's birthday party rather than finding some hot girls to play poker with. And all that this double entendre implies. That's slut. Who? Tori. She said she'd be here. Between this and the weird focus on her having to do a double shift at the hospital, movie telegraphs Lori as the killer from the get-go. Good thing Tree is distracted with her back turn long enough for Nick to get killed. Also, it's crazy convenient Nick is blaring loud music so that Tree can't hear this. Baylor. So you can hear now, asshole. Yeah, zero chance the killer could break the big areas of glass above and below the piece of wood and get in. If Lori's intention was to have Tree eat the cupcake in the morning and die from the poison, then why did she also have this card? Isn't this just unneeded evidence that could point in Lori's direction if Tree's death comes under any suspicion? Tombs was the subject of- Mind you, the killer has the remote, but the TV randomly turning on and off and conveniently showing information for the viewer to understand future shenanigans is so screamed to that I'm sending this sh Okay, fine. Lori was in the bathroom the whole time. But how did she turn the TV on and off from there? Did she drill a secret remote control hole in the bathroom wall? Also, why did she wait so long? And at this point, Tree still has the poison cupcake and has shown every intention of eating it on this particular day. So Lori is acting like a killer who knows Tree isn't going to eat it. Okay, out of all the days of your life, what makes this day special? What gives this day meaning? Nothing. It's your birthday? How would you know this from a ringtone? Sure, it's blatantly singing It's Your Birthday, but who would actually change their ringtone on their birthday? Especially when the night before she was blackout drunk. Whoever's killing you knows it's your birthday. Good thing Tree had a supposed one night stand with Encyclopedia Brown. You were wasted last night. You know, I was afraid you were gonna fall or choke on your own vomit like Janis Joplin. Approximately 67% of meet cute moments stem from mentioning Janis Joplin dying on her own vomit. Why was Nick ever even on the suspect list? Before she started this list, he had already been killed on one of her other death days. Is this guy seriously about to jack it to gay porn with the blinds even remotely cracked open? And sh he thinks he sees somebody at the window for a second, but continues the dolphin flogging ritual unimpeded. Why did Tree bother to get the night vision goggles and camouflage her face if she was going to add the bright pink highlights? No, seriously, how does Lori find Tree everywhere she goes? She's not stalking her, or else she would have killed her way before this. <laughs> Wet dream. It makes zero sense that Danielle would have the black envelope, and movie never bothers to explain why she does. I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> Gotta love those bus drivers who see two women fighting in the street and think, you know what, my horn will get them out of the street before I run over them. Yeah, that's much better than putting on the brakes. Pervy McPerverson seems to have lost his sunglasses that he's had on all the other days. This movie is PG-13. Also, you know what would have been really fun? Seeing the reaction of Carter and his dumbass roommate Ryan when she walked out of his dorm room naked. Your plan totally sucks. What? So, Tree has to tell Carter this story every day, which means if they end up together, she's going to have this relationship with Carter that she's built up in her mind that Carter hasn't, and he will have no reason to believe that any of this actually happened. The power of boners can even make you forget potentially psycho women claiming to have literally lived through the plot of Groundhog Day. While Gregory is in no way the killer in this movie, he decides to act like one during the blackout for absolutely no reason at all. We just got these back from imaging. And these are signs of major trauma. Technically, you should be dead. Dr. Cheats on his wife would be amazing at CinemaSense. Also, this is a really interesting plot point but it brings up more questions than it answers. If she's been suffering every bit of trauma, then why is she only now having to go to the hospital? 
She's been stabbed a few times, drowned, and knocked over the head. And the movie never brings this up again. Also, also, if you're going to do this, you should at least make it matter or explain it more. Which this movie never does. This school must make a small fortune on these school mascot masks, since every f***ing person associated with the school seems to have one. Also, even if Dr. Butler did choose to buy the mask for whatever reason, why would he leave it in his desk drawer in what seriously looks like a secret compartment? Welcome to Bayfield University Hospital, in which no nurses make any kinds of rounds at 9.30pm, and any asshole can walk around the halls unobserved. This movie stole hospital protocol from Halloween 2. If indeed Lori planned to kill Tree because she was f***ing Gregory, and Lori was in love with him and thought she had a chance with her out of the way, why would she do this? <laughs> Tree has hit the button on the keys several times now and never changed position, yet the car magically beeps in the nick of time. Um, I'm pretty sure this wouldn't be considered hiding. I did it! I did it! I did it! Woo! Looks like Tree went to the Independence Day school of celebrating too early. Man, how do those cars make noise only once they've appeared on screen? Must be some sort of new feature for psychopaths looking to buy souped-up four-door sedans. Killer is coming from the opposite way Tree was, even though they both came from the same location. Happy Death Day, Tokyo Drift! She brought the f***ing cupcake? Did she think that when she chased down Tree like a madman, she'd be able to force-feed her this sh Also, looking past that Lori knew exactly where Tree was going once she left the hospital, why would she have the candle and a lighter or matches with her when she had every intention of stabbing Tree? Not to mention Lori would have no clue that Tree would be conveniently stuck in a cop car with gasoline pouring out of it. How the f*** does that candle land right in the middle of the gasoline? Oh hey, you're up. SILENCE! Okay, I gotta give it to Jessica Roth's performance in this movie. It's truly the best thing about it. If Tree has major trauma and scar tissue from all her stab wounds and sh shouldn't her body look kind of like Deadpool right now? Any questions? Yeah, why was it morning a minute ago and now it's nearly nighttime in the next scene? Did you and Carter part for the rest of the day without explaining why you can predict the future? Where Jennifer Trent has the latest on this developing situation. Don't you love those movie TVs where it's just loud enough so that the hero can hear news that is pertinent to the plot? Can you turn that up, please? The John Toombs portion of this movie feels more like padding than an actual relevant storyline. Sure, he supposedly killed six younger girls, but Tree can't even prove in her flashback that Toombs has seen her. She clearly just sees the cop sitting outside his room, and even the cop doesn't look up at her. Also, the reporter calls him John Toombs, even though in the earlier news report, his first name was shown on screen as Joseph. If the cop's body is all the way on the other side of the hospital room with no blood around it, then why was there blood on the door window? We learn eventually that Lori gave Toombs the mask and unbuckled his restraints, but why? Even if she's hoping to set up Toombs as the killer by giving him the mask, how would the cops even know whomever killed Tree had a mask on? And what are the chances Toombs even goes to the college campus or anywhere near a tree? Toombs is never even a suspect unless the cops can place him at the scene of the crime. The only way this works is if Tree randomly goes to the hospital, which Lori would have no way to know what happened. Also, the majority of Lori's actions only make sense if she too was reliving these days, or knew the tree was, which the movie adamantly states she's not. Carter, ex machina! What? Nice gesture and all, but now Becky has no beverage. Tree, the vampire slayer! He's going to escape! Go get help! Go! After Tree put a knife to that cop's throat and told him to get help, the local police and hospital security must really be having a busy night with other lawbreakers, considering they're holding a serial killer here. Did you ever figure out how Toombs got free? How is Tree even back at the sorority house? Even if she somehow wasn't arrested after assaulting a cop, I'm pretty sure she'd still be stuck at the station all night answering questions. How does Lori magically know that Tree is going to eat the cupcake? On all the other days, she was forced to kill her in other ways, and so far today, she hasn't tried at all. Thanks, but I already ate it last night. In my sleep. What? You killed me. Tree's Holmesian realization here that Lori is the killer is awesome, but I'm sinning this shit because Lori is the worst slasher killer this side of Rebecca Gayhart. You poisoned it, but I never ate it before. Tree needs to work on her flashbacks. She clearly threw the cupcake in the trash and said the too many carbs line after she did it earlier in the movie, and not on the floor as the movie suggests here. Also, this was the only time she threw the cupcake away. So you had to find another way. And then Toombs fell right into your lap. For Lori to let a serial killer loose and frame him for Tree's murder, she would have to have been convinced that Tree was never going to eat the cupcake, and that there weren't better ways to poison her. This plan requires Lori to loosen John Toombs' restraints at the hospital, immediately leave, and find Tree every single time no matter where she is. Not to mention kill Tree and hope that John Toombs could have done it. This plan makes way too many assumptions. Lori clearly puts the mask on Toombs, which one would assume she would do on every one of these days. But when Tree goes into the room later, he doesn't have the mask on. I'll take it down to the police. I'm sure they can tell us what your little birthday treat is made of. You realize that you're talking to a murdering psychopath, right? Why would you say this and think that you could just leave the room without getting into a fight to the death? Gregory? They just kept choosing you. 
over me. Guess all you wanted was a cheap slut like you! Cheap slut versus psychotic killer? Gotta side with Gregory here. Tree beans, Ruby Modine, and the Vagine. Considering Tree's inside should pretty much be soup now from all the previous injuries that apparently carry over into the next day, how does she even have this much fight left in her? Jesus Christ, try explaining this to the cops. Lori's little plot was super lame. Poisoning a cupcake? Really? We're Kappas. We don't eat cupcakes. Danielle being amazing at cinema sins aside, well, I'm sure they found poison in the cupcake. How the f did Tree explain how she knew there was poison in the cupcake? And now that you're bedroom is officially a crime scene and all. Yeah, and the cops apparently didn't need you for much questioning whatsoever. You know what your little scenario reminds me? Where? Uh, What's that? Groundhog Day. The movie Groundhog Day? Mm -hmm. With Bill Murray? Who's Bill Murray? How can the person in this birthday video look this happy and somehow not know what Groundhog Day or Bill Murray is? Oi, mate! I think there's something wrong with your suit. There's a dead guy in here. I'm totally having deja vu right now. Oh. A deja vu is usually a glitch in the matrix. It happens when they change something. He's going to escape. Go get help. Run! Will you please stop staring at me like I took a dump on your mom's head? Stop. My penis can only get so erect. It's not like you have a foot long. Damn! I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. You're a dumb bitch, too! Ding, 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 ding. Hey! Safety's off. Thanks for the tip. Guess I remember the safety that time, you bastard. <laughs>